So let me share something with you and please tell me if you can relate to this. You build a really cool AI agent and you got super excited about all the cool things it can do, but you forgot to ask one of the most important questions. Where are the users of this particular agent going to live? This is a critical question that we need to keep in mind while we are actually building the agent upfront. So let's talk about Google Agent Development Kit. This is certainly one of the best agentic frameworks out there for you to build an agent. Now, even if I used that to build a powerful agent, but then I pointed this agent to my own custom UI, and if I'm expecting users to only go to my UI to interact with it, I don't think it's going to cut it. Let me take a scenario. Let's say that you are a real estate company and you have a ton of salespeople and most of these people are on the job, on the field, and they're writing and creating listings almost multiple times a day. Now, one wrong phrase, for example, safe neighborhood or great neighborhood for young couples could actually land your company in legal trouble. If you're in real estate, you know what I mean. And this is where agents can actually help a real estate agent. I know it sounds funny, but I think you know what I mean. The big question we need to ask here is, where are the real estate agents, like the real people spending the most of the time? So if they're a... Google Workspace customer as an example, they are spending most of their time in Google Docs, Google Sheets, and most importantly, Google Chat. So if I were the one who was creating the ADK agent, I would deploy this in Google Chat. Let me actually show you an example of how this interaction would look like in this demo where I actually deployed the ADK agent so that I can access the agent directly in Google Chat. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm in my Google chat and I'm going to find first my real estate agent. So here it goes. So this is built as an app and I have it right now here and I'm just going to start the conversation, right? So going to say hi. Let's initiate our conversation. All right, so it responds by saying I'm the compliance advisor. Please provide these kind of details. So let's say that I am the real estate person, right? So this is the kind of stuff that I'm going to provide. So I'm going to provide the address. I'm going to provide the price. This is the listing that I have created, right? Stunning five bedroom estate in the heart of Scottsdale. It's ideal for successful professionals who appreciate the finer things. This property is, sits in an ex exclusive gated community. You will feel completely safe. Neighborhood tech executives. It's not suitable for large families or group living conditions. You, they're also giving some additional details, right? So you can see that from my perspective, I'm not in real estate. This looks fine, right? They're targeting someone who should be targeted. So I'm just going to send this to the compliance agent to see what output I'm going to get, right? And what this agent is going to do is very thorough compliance check on if this particular listing is going to be a problem or not. There you go. We have got the response and I see there's a lot of issues. I did not imagine this, okay? Overall compliance is 67. That is like not good. So that's why overall it's low. Fair housing ad compliance, four issues found. This accuracy in misleading claims, state disclosures, three Okay, so the home is not suitable for large families. This statement directly discriminates against protected classes. Okay, I did not know that. We prefer buyers who will personally occupy the property. This implies discrimination against group living situation, extended families. Okay, this executive home is ideal for successful professionals. I felt a little bit here. This creates an exclusionary tone and I felt it as well. No FHA or VA loans accepted. Sellers can't set financing terms. So walking distance to renowned Mayo Clinic. Oh, like this is incorrect. It was also able to check whether the listing is actually correct or not. And you can see that there's just a lot of stuff which is over here, right? So imagine if you had an agent like this, which can actually do a fact check as well as compare everything against the law and come back to you with something like this, where you now have a clear understanding of what should be the listing. It's also suggesting fixes and stuff like that, right? Now, this is just the starting point, right? And of course, I can make my agent much more intelligent and I can completely provide an end-to-end -end listing prepared for you or in a doc as well. But this is what I'm talking about, right? So I am in my very familiar Google chat where I am interacting with all of my colleagues every single day. So I don't even have to get out of this and I can just have the interaction here just like I'm chatting with another colleague of mine and this will be accessible on my phone on my web and everywhere else, right? This is a perfect example of where you should be deploying your agents in production because this is where your users are, all right? In this video, I'm going to take you through the broad architecture of how I was able to build this using ADK. I used Agent Starter Pack and then how I was able to deploy this and then how did I get it to land in the Google Chat app, all right? So let's get into it. 
All right, so let's try and understand what is the overall workflow and what are the main components that are part of this, right? So as we saw in the demo, the agent basically initiates the conversation in Google chat. So he's going to, he or she's going to paste it. And once the agent does that, then the chat is going to call on the app script, which is basically the webhook, which ultimately is going to call the agent, which is built via ADK and is already deployed on Cloud Run, right? Now this agent has access to tools like Google search. You can also enrich it by also giving it access to Google Maps and your own custom tools as well. And in this one, I'm using 2.5 Flash. You can obviously use 3, 3 Flash or 3.0 Pro as well. And then the agent has the brain, right? So it is able to go look into Google search and create that logic and come back with the compliance report, right? And then which is pinged back to this. So if you look at the broader components that we are going to cover is number one, we will be creating an agent using Agent Starter Pack in ADK. Second, we will be deploying that agent in Cloud Run and we will make that agent available for our app script to be able to call it, right? So that's what we will do. Third, we will then go ahead and create the app script and then we will also deploy the app script and we will provide the details of Cloud Run to that app script. And then fourth, we will then install the chat app in Google Chat. So these are the major components and I will run you through them so that you can understand this pretty quickly, all right? So with that, let's get into the first piece, which is creating the base agent, leveraging the agent starter pack for ADK. So there are multiple ways to build an ADK agent. I'm going to be using Cloud Shell. You can use the Gemini CLI. You can use your own favorite IDE, such as VS Code, or you can also use Visual Builder to build the agent visually. I'm happy to cover that in a different video. Please let me know in the comment section. But right now I'm going to be using Cloud Shell and I'm going to be using Agent Starter Pack so that I can have an interaction instead of writing any line of code, right? So I'm going to give this particular command, which is UVX Agent Starter Pack Create. And this basically allows me to create an ADK agent interactively, right? I'll be able to decide what kind of agent I want to build. Now, again, remember, we are okay with the base agent for this one. Because all we want to do is create like a compliance and it just needs to use one single tool, which is Google search. Okay. So I'm going to give this my real estate agent. And I'm going to say that go ahead and create a base agent and see the deployment target. I'm going to give the deployment target as cloud run. Okay. You can choose to do in Vertex AI engine, but in this moment, I'm going to do it as cloud run. Want to have an in-memory session. And then I want to keep it simple for the moment. That means I don't want to have Terraform and CI CD for the moment. So I'm just going to click on one and then you need to provide your location. So I'm going to just go with central one. And it basically asks if your Vertex CI is enabled or not, right? So there you go. It has already gone ahead and created the agent, right? So now I'm going to my directory and now I'm giving this particular command, which is make install. Now this particular command will basically install all the dependencies and stuff like that. And your agent will be ready to be deployed to production just after, right? What you could do is you could test your agent in the development UI, which I will show you. And if you're happy with the functionality, then you're able to deploy the agent in production as well. Okay. So to test the agent, you're just going to give a command called make playground, and it will open up the agent for you to test pretty quickly. So I'm going to do that here and we should have the agent over here. So I'm going to click on that and we will test the agent right now. All right. So I am in my agent and I'm just going to say hi just to see if it has deployed properly or not. And there you go. It is the typical agent that that is functioning, but obviously it is not going to do what we want it to do, right? Because this is the bare minimum code that we have, which the agents out of pack has created for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back. And now we will get into the actual structure where we will be updating the code. Now that is where you are welcome to take help from Gemini again to ask Gemini to write a particular code, which will be correct for your specific use case. So I'm going to show you what I did. I basically gave Gemini the use case and I requested it to give me the right kind of code, which I can upload in my agent.py, right? All right. So when we are here, we can see that this is the one which we just deployed. And if you look at this is the bare minimum agent code that the agent starter pack has spun up for us, right? Now, if you look at my actual agent, this is the one that I had created before. And this is where I have given it quite a detailed understanding that, hey, you are Surya's real estate compliance advisor and your role is to do this. This is your input format. So all I have done here is I've provided this as part of the instructions. So really plain English, 
and then I've given it the Google search tool, right? So that it can use that as part of its discussion. So, so that is something which is absolutely essential for your agent to actually comply with. Now, once we have this, let me now go back and run this specific agent in the web UI so that you see, you can see this in action, okay? So I open up my terminal again, and this time I'm gonna go into my different folder, which is real estate advisor, which has this particular agent, right? Now I'm gonna say make playground. And now, you know, the agent that I'll be able to interact with should behave the way I want it to behave, right? So all I'm showing is once you've made changes in the code based on the use case that you like, you should be good to go for you to deploy the agent, right? So now I've got this and I'm going to say hi. And now this is the real estate agent, which basically we saw as part of the initial demo, right? So as a, I'm ready to help you review your property listings and then you can upload the property listing as I had shown, right? So now my agent is working as I expected and now I'm ready to do the next step, which is basically deploy this agent. All right, so once you're satisfied with all the changes that you have made to your agent.py, you can come back here and just type this particular command, which is make deploy, right? This is the fastest way you can deploy your agent in production in Google Cloud Run. So what you're seeing on the screen is it is doing that job. And once it is done, then we will go into Google Cloud Console and see the agent's public URL live there, right? So we'll give it a few minutes. It usually takes a few minutes in order for it to deploy. Now, here I'm just showing how you can deploy. I have already deployed the actual agent that you had seen in the demo. So we will then from there take the next step, which is going to the app script and writing the app script there and then attaching this particular agent to that particular app script. Okay. So we'll wait for this to finish and then we will go into the next steps. All right, so looks like it has done its job and it seems that it has been successfully deployed and it's serving 100% traffic. So let's go to our cloud run and let me just refresh it here. And you can see, there you go. It is deployed two minutes back. And if I click on this, then this is my agent live in action, right? Now, now, if you have made the changes in this particular agent, then you have the public URL right here. This is the public URL, which you should be copying. In my case, I have, I'm going to be using the previous agent, which is a real estate advisor, and I'm going to be using this particular public URL. Okay. So that concludes really our first step, which is creating an ADK agent, which will be then used as the brain by the app script to call within Google chat. So now let's move on to the second step, which is creating that app script. All right, so I got inspired to do this demo because of this particular quick start guide. And in this quick start guide, they have shared the exact chat app configuration. So, you know, you are able to open the project and make a copy. So I made the copy here, as you can see, and I've got all of these different details over here. So, you know, here, all you need to do is provide the reasoning engine resource as part of the script property. So if you go to the project settings over here, this is where you will change the project to your thing and then you will add the script property here. So they're asking you to add two different properties, which is one will be the reasoning engine resource name, which will be the ADK agent. In this one, they are deploying it in Vertex AI agent engine. In our case, in my case, I deployed it in Google Cloud Run. So you need to play, play around a little bit. And then they're asking service account key as well. So those are the two things that you will be providing. And once you provide those two things, you will be then going ahead and deploying, right? So this is the one which I have. You can see that this is the same link that I've given, which is the Cloud Run URL. And then this is how I have deployed it. So, you know, you're going to click on deploy. If you're doing it for the first time, then you're going to click on new deployment. But since I've already deployed it, then you're going to basically do a new version here and then click on deploy. And once you deploy, you will actually get this deployment ID, which is very important. And I will tell you that in, in a second. Okay. So you'll copy this deployment ID and keep it with you. And then we will go to the next step after this. So if you look at this, so here, what they're saying is once you have copied the deployment ID, then you go back to your console and configure the Google chat API. So let's do this live so that you see exactly where to do this. Uh, so it becomes easy for you to replicate as well. Okay. So what we have done so far is we have created the ADK agent. We have deployed the agent in cloud run. We have got the name of the resource that is the public URL. In this case, in the guide, they have deployed it in Vertex AI engine and they have got uh, the resource as well. Then you come here and copy this particular script. And within the project settings, you provide the details of your resource name and your service key. Okay. After you're done with that, after you've deployed it, you get a deployment ID. You take that and then you go back to Google Cloud Console, which I'm going to show you next.
All right, so I'm back in my Google Cloud Console and then I'm going to look for the Google Chat API. So I'm going to click on this and you need to enable this. And once you have enabled it, then you need to click on manage. And this is where you're able to basically configure any add-on then that you want to add to your chat application, right? So this is how you're creating the chat app. So in this case, you're going to click on configuration and within configuration, you will provide the name of the app. You saw the real estate app. This is the real estate, so real estate advisor app. This is the name. It has come from there. You can provide any kind of avatar. So I gave it this avatar. You can provide anything over there, provide a description. You should enable the interactive features. You should allow it to join spaces in a group conversation. Then in the app script, this is where you need to provide the deployment ID that you actually got from here. So this is a deployment ID. This is what you would be providing over here. And then you will make this chat available to the specific users. And then once you're done with this, you basically save, right? So what this does is this makes the app, which has this particular name, available to everybody who is under that particular domain. And they should be able to see that app live. So if I it's a, maybe change the name here, and if I click on save, so now I'm in my chat application, and then I look for real estate, and then there you go. You can see it will ask you to install the app, and then you should be able to see the app right here, right? So you, you publish the app over there, and you are able to see the app right over here. So that brings us to the end of this video. I really wanted to show you a real use case where you can actually deploy an agent which can be used by users wherever they are, right? And Google Chat is definitely one of those places where, you know, most of the users of an organization are. So if you found value in this video, please let me know in the comment section. And if you have any other use cases that you can think based on this video, please let me know as well. I'm also planning to make some additional videos, keeping some other industries and some other use cases in mind where we will deploy the agent where their users are using ADK and Agent Startup Pack. So if you have any use case in mind or if you're interested in those kind of videos, please do let me know in the comment section as well about that. And as always, if there are questions, please do ask and I'll do my best to respond as much as I can. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please do hit that like button and please do subscribe to the channel if you're coming here for the first time. Thank you once again for your time and I will see you in the next one.